We've got some injury news to break down here on Patriots Today by Chat Sports. I'm your girl, Allie Barefoot, and unfortunately, our prized possession in Drake May had an MRI this week. We're going to break down what they found, what this means for Week 7 going up against the Jaguars. I'm back after the show. I want to talk about Ramondre Stevenson because, number one, my running back depth is very low on my fantasy team, and I need Ramondre to come back. But also, we realize Antonio Gibson cannot be a starting running back, and that could be huge for the Patriots' run game. So we're going to break that down here on today's show. But first, I have a quick question for you. Do you want Drake May to be the future of the franchise? Like this video for me. I know a lot of you guys loved his debut, including yours truly, and I want to see him keep getting better. And it's going to be very unfortunate if he can't progressively do that if he's injured. But we did get this update very soon on October 13th saying, I'm told Drake May went for an MRI after Wednesday's practice something to watch this week. And I'm thinking, what the hell? What did I miss? Because he played a full game on Sunday, and he looked pretty damn good. Between Sunday and Wednesday, when did he get hurt? Well, here's what Alex Van Pelt had to say, of course, the offensive coordinator for the Patriots, saying, we'll see as we go down through the course of the week. But right now, probably just precautionary. I think he feels good about where he is right now. And I think the good news out of this is the fact that it doesn't look like Drake, Drake May just has an undisclosed injury. I think it was something got, he got, got beat up in on Sunday's loss. It lingered, so they double-checked it. And I don't blame him for getting beat up. He took four sacks against the Texans. And then he had eight quarterback hits, including one gnarly hit with his arm, tucked up against his shoulder, that he went down and came up a little bit groggy. So I know Drake May got hit. Plenty of times, 12 times to be exact, against a very tough Houston Texans defense. But there wasn't a specific injury that they were trying to monitor. And when you pair four sacks and eight quarterback hits, that's not even counting the tackles that he had when he was the leading rusher for the Patriots in Week 6 with 38 yards on the ground. Remember how I said we want Ramondre Stevenson back? That's why. Antonio Gibson can't do that for some reason. But Drake May took numerous hits. Number one, we got to teach old boy how to slide when he wants to be a running back. Number two, he was still getting his footing. So I do think if he does play in week seven, we should possibly avoid as many hits as he's got in week six. But this is the scary part because we realize we don't want to put Drake May back there because he's going to get absolutely injured. That didn't happen, but he definitely got beaten up. And you really can't blame the offensive line for what happened on Sunday because that was actually – the best offensive line we have seen in six weeks. Sorry, Jacoby. They somehow got better. The Patriots' offensive line actually allowed their lowest pressure rate of the season, week six, against the Texans, which was 33% per PFF. And Alex Van Pelt had said heading into the game that he felt strongly about the then-settled offensive tackle combo. Now, I'm going to make a point here, is that they actually had a 33% pressure rate allowed going up against the best pressure rate defense in the NFL. If you can hold off the best pressure coming at Drake May, then you should be able to do it with any other opponent moving forward and protect our king, which is Drake May. And here's what he had to say about his injury news. And I feel all right. I think you're playing quarterback in the NFL. You're going to be sore the next day. See what I mean? I think it was just more so of a lingering issue They just wanted to internally scan. But he said that's part of it. Probably can do a better job of getting down or throwing it away. I think I took a couple of sacks today, maybe where I could have thrown it away or thrown checkdowns instead of getting sacked. That's exactly what Jacoby Brissett did. That's why they played him instead of the rookie. But then we also noticed a little bit earlier today, Drake May just strolled through the Patriots locker room prior to practice. No wraps, braces, boots, etc., on either knee, was walking normally. So it sounds like Drake May should be good to go for Week 7, but when you're going to be looking at a possible future of your franchise, they're probably just taking extra precautionary steps. Why? Because he's now quarter- he was quarterback too. So thankfully, Drake Jacoby Brissett just got benched and not hurt, so if Drake May couldn't play, we just go back to Brissett. But when you're looking at the future, this is the guy that's going to be the quarterback for years to come, they're probably going to treat him with a little bit more bubble wrap around him, at least for when he just starts and he starts getting hit 
by these professional linemen that weigh over 300 pounds. So it sounds like it's just taking the extra step of precaution. They got a scan to make sure there was nothing lingering internally, but he should be good to go for week seven. If anything changes, I'll let you know. And I know you guys want to see Drake May in week seven, right? In London, actually a second time going to London. He actually went in 2012 for the Summer Olympics with his family. If you guys want Drake May to be there week seven, go on ahead and do one thing for me. Hit that like button. You're actually going to get hit with a YouTube ad break right here. So feel free to stick around because we're going to talk about Ramondre Stevenson coming up next. Where is Ramondre Stevenson? What's going on with him? What is injured and why is he not playing? And if he is not playing, we can't go back to Gibson in the run game. I'll talk about that in a minute. But who's going to be Drake May's top wide receiver this week in the passing game going up against the worst pass defense in the NFL in the Jacksonville Jaguars. We got a lot to break down here, but first, I want to make sure you guys have tickets to the next Patriots game ready to go locked and loaded by using Game Time. Game Time is the number one ticketing app that I use to get tickets to any sporting event, concert, comedy show, or pretty much anything that you need a ticket to get into. And one thing that I really do enjoy about Game Time is the fact that I can see my seat before I have to buy the ticket. I've got a nice 3D panoramic view, so I can actually even see how close my neighbor is going to be, and I can make sure I'm not behind a pole. So if you want to go see the Jets take on the Patriots, well, then all you have to do is click into that on game time. You click into the game. You're going to find this beautiful stadium layout, right? There's no, it's very descriptive. There's a lot of pictures. It's not just like an overlay 2D image. You get to pick through thousands of deals, and then once you find the ticket set, fit well for you and the person you're going to. I love that Prize Picks kind of auto uh, excuse me, Game Time kind of automatically bundles these tickets together. So as you guys can see, is that they've got two seats together and that's your total price up front. That's all you guys need to pay. So, they do have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of tickets. Download Game Time today. Use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Will Ramondre Stevenson be ready for Game Time? That is the question. He did not play in Week 6 after leaving the game in Week 5 against the Dolphins, and he was listed as a did-not-participate during Wednesday's practice with a foot injury. And now, let's take you back two weeks ago. Ramondre Stevenson said he got hit with a helmet and that he was fine. But obviously, something's obvious lingering and hurting him because he was not there against the Texans. A helmet hit to his calf during week five is what they are listing it as. There is no official injury update as of right now on whether Ramondre Stevenson will play in week seven. But we do know that... L being listed as a did not participate on Wednesday is not a good sign because he already didn't practice all last week. So something is definitely bothering Stevenson, which is a huge blow to the run game. Because here's what we did without Stevenson. Drake May, God be it, the mobile quarterback that we all love, should not be your leading rusher unless his name is Lamar Jackson. There's just no excuse for it. 38 yards on the ground. Antonio Gibson, let's have a talk real quick. 13 carries for 19 yards. He averaged a yard and a half. That's such ass. That's terrible. That's horrible. You need to bring up Terrell Jennings or Jermichael Hasty for Week 7 because if we continue to rely on the legs of May and Gibson, you're not going to get anywhere with Gibson. It's going to be all May. You're going to need a little bit of help in the run game if Ramondre Stevenson is not playing. And, albeit, I would just stick to the passing game. The reason why you have Drake May is because of that arm right there. The dimes that he can throw, 40-plus yards, or the quick releases, tight slants for 10 yards, is why we love Drake May. Now, you know the Jaguars' pass defense is 32nd in the NFL, which is why I think you should continuously be putting it in the air. But, Allie, who's he going to throw to? We don't have a wide receiver one. Bullshit. Your wide receiver one is Pop DeMario Douglas. Flat out. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. If Kendrick Bourne wants to come back and produce what he did before he got injured, maybe we can talk about it. 
But DeMario is clearly connecting with Drake May on a whole different level. Six catches for 92 yards and one touchdown. The first touchdown in his NFL career with his longest being 61. And I notice a lot of his routes primarily go to the right side, which a good defense is going to catch on to. I don't think Jacksonville will, but if we can start to really filter him out, right in between that 10 to 20 yard line, I think that'll be perfect. Use him in the flats. He is your quickest. He has the tightest hands you will see in the Patriots receiving room, which is why I think DeMario should be his top target. Mayo already said that Pop is our best route runner, but yet we haven't been using him like he is. I feel like we're still not even getting Pop as many targets and catches as he should, like a Justin Jefferson, like an Amon Ross St. Brown. Obviously, Douglas isn't as good as those guys, but he is that to what Amon Ra is to the Lions, you know? That's who Pop Douglas is to the Patriots. But the one thing that's pissed me off, and I'm blaming Alex Van Pelt for this, do not incorporate Douglas too late. Why am I seeing most of his production in the second half of the game? Why are we not taking advantage of those quick first downs with Pop the first offensive series? You need to use your top receiver as soon as you possibly can. Something would, It would make headlines if Justin Jefferson did not catch a football until the third quarter. You see what I mean? Alex Van Pelt needs to do better, and I do think that will change in Week 7. So right now, his line is set at 46 and a half receiving yards. You just saw he had 96 yards last week. Do we think Pop goes over or under in receiving yards in Week 7 in London? Speaking of that game, I will be live bright and early. 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday morning. Come hang out with us. We're going to have fun talking about the Jaguars and Patriots game and hopefully talking about the Patriots' second win of the season.